I'm on. All right, here we go. Here we go. Am I on? I'm ready. We let let's go. Welcome once again to another episode of Bible class. Another chance and time where we like to come here and dig and dig into the word until we've come out and pull out a treasure. We come to find, as the Bible said, the mysteries of God, to find out what are the mysteries of God so that we may be able to live out our destiny. That's what we come to Bible class for. Get your Bibles, get your pens, get your papers, get your app phones, get your cell phone, get your, uh, get your tablets, Get them all ready. We gonna, we gonna, we. I wanna. If you would allow me for a few seconds, can I just go for a few seconds? Because, yeah, I wanna, I wanna go back. Um, I wanna go back because I know there's a lot of us who 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 were not here Sunday, so some of us. Uh, I had to tune in and watch the service on on social media and and but did not get an opportunity or chance to hear something that uh that went forth sunday and i want to i gotta i have to dig into that i just have to dig into that and what what i'm speaking of for those of you who do not know these more of you guys that were here do know i was talking about i was speaking to god about the difference between the physical and the spiritual realm. And, and I, and I was saying, and I was, I was, I was commencing and speaking to God about the physical and the spiritual realm and how we sometimes um, are not really afraid, but don't know how to operate in it because it's not visual. I remember saying that. And I remember and I, and I said to you guys, I said that God told me, oh, it's the same thing. You operate it in an everyday fashion. You just don't see it in that way. You don't see it at that way. And I told him, well, explain it to me. And he explained it to me like the cell phone. I'm sure everybody know about the cell phone. Everybody have a cell phone. If you don't have a cell phone, you have an iWatch or iPad or something. You have something with technology in your house. Not only is it in your house, but that you operate on a daily basis. And I said, okay. And God would tell me it's the same way like that with the spirit world because uh, that cell phone, that cell phone, those radio waves uh, that, that, that allows that cell phone to work and carry those messages from tower to tower that allows and helps our cell phones to come on and to do what we're um, trying to get them to do, we cannot see any of that happen. You cannot see your radio waves that connects your phone to the, uh, the tower that it, has to, that it has to operate off of. You can't see that. Yet, if you dial a phone number and push sin, if you dial any phone number off your phone and push sin, the first thing you are expecting to happen is for that call to go to the person you sent it to. And if that call don't go, that call don't go through, the first thing we start doing, wait a minute, I know my phone not off. Because we have trust in our phone so much, not that it's not warranted, because the phone has proven to me that in, when I call, that the call I'm calling or the person I'm calling goes through. It's proved that to me before. So I can put trust, Aaron, that if I take my phone and dial your phone number, that my phone is going to reach your phone. I, got, I, I can put trust in that because I've seen it work before. I've seen it work on a daily basis. It gives me evidence that it is working. I've seen it happen. So I can put stock in my phone working. Yet, I cannot see how my phone is working. I cannot see what type of radio waves leaves my phone, goes through the ether waves to reach your phone. I cannot see that. I can't see it. I'm, and you can't see it. Yet, because of evidence, because of evidence that the telephone has shown you before 
that it that it can operate, operate. I say that it can operate under those functions Amen. we trust in the cell phone. Amen. We trust in social media. We trust in Facebook. I seen some on television, they were saying this people, Facebook's junkies, like they gotta tune in. I said, wait a minute. They say it's people that's just hooked so much on social media, if they don't tune in, they, they, they just, they, they don't go right. My God. Wow. And, and here's the thing with that. Nothing's wrong with it. Here's the thing. The only thing, that be, it becomes wrong when you use it for the wrong purpose. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. To make my point. We get, uh, what, what those things, what do they call on Facebook when they come, what is it? Uh -uh. When somebody send you something, what is it called? Not a friend request. Like if you talking to somebody on their page, I, I guess. Okay, a comment. Let's say with a comment. 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 That's when you send back a message, right? A comment. Okay. We trust so much in Facebook that someone can send me a comment. Commenting on something that I placed on Facebook, right? And I, I guess it shows their name or picture or something, right? And that comment that I received from them, whether the comment actually is coming from them or not, there's nothing you can tell me to make me think they didn't write it. That's how much we trust in Facebook. Not, now, my mind don't go to maybe somebody hacked this page and wrote this comment. Maybe Facebook made a mistake. If somebody else wrote a comment and they just put his face on. None of that never enters my mind because Facebook, I have placed trust in Facebook by Facebook proving to me that Facebook can work and operate the way it should work. All I'm going to think is what Facebook tells me. Now that's the physical. And yet you still don't know how Facebook works. You still don't know how your cell phone works, your tablet works. We don't know how it works. Yet we put all our trust in it only because it's proven. These things we put our trust in, it's proven to show me that its function or the way it operates works. Am I right? Yet, I can't see how it's working. But evidence shows me and proved to me that it works. Right? Let's do it. Come on, let, let's watch this. Because something is wrong when we put physical or more stock and more trust in the physical than we do the spirit. Because even though, go to, go to Second Kings, even though you don't know, you don't know how that cell phone is working. You do not know what type of micro uh, radioactive waves where they are, how they're going, in what direction they're going, how they bounce it on tower to tower. You cannot see any of that. Yet we know it's working. Right? We know it's working. And I don't care what you say. If, my, if I set my alarm on my phone at 6.30 in the morning to wake me up, and my alarm goes off in the morning without me looking at the clock. Uh -huh. my, my first thoughts is at 6.30 in the morning. Uh -huh. Now the phone could have been wrong, but, but, but because I have trust in the evidence that my phone has operated in that function previous, I'm still gonna believe at 6.30 my phone will ring. 
Now, come on, come on. I'm going to show you something. Can I walk with you? We're going to walk. We're going to walk real slow. I, I can't afford to lose nobody on this. I can't afford to lose nobody on this. I'm, come on, I need, I need you to walk slow with me. Come on, go to 2 Kings. We gonna, go walk with me. Walk with me. Please walk with me. Because I want to show you that the spirit world is so much realer than the physical world that nothing that takes place in the physical world can even enter without first hitting the spirit world. Come, come with me. Go to 2 Kings. I'm, I'm going to prove my point. I don't do all this studying for nothing. I'm going to prove it. 2 Kings. Watch this. I want us to see this. I want us to see this. 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. Six chapter, six chapter, six chapter. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Um, you there? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, let's start. Let's begin reading. Uh, uh, let's begin the reading right here at this uh, 13th verse. Okay, so this is, let's, 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 let's just line up what's going on first. We, we here, we find ourselves with Elisha. You know, the, the armor bearer and the, the precursor to Elijah. This is this, this the story we're in. And, 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 and we're in 2 Kings, that sixth chapter. And, and what happens is Elisha, Elisha is... The king of Syria, what's going on is the king of Syria, the king of Syria is, 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 is continuously, he's continuously trying to, to uh, he's continuously trying to set up and, and ambush the children of Israel. But, but Elisha, God keeps showing Elisha his plans. And, 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 and everything they try to do, everything they try to do, God shows Elisha. Elisha go tell the children, hey, look, don't go down 67 to Justine because they waiting for you right there. Don't go around Ashland Way because if you go that way behind that building, they waiting to get you there. And, 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 and what happens is, what happens is, uh, uh, the king has gotten upset. And he said, now, wait a minute. Somebody has snitched. Oh, well, I, let, me, uh, let me paraphrase the Bible and say it. He, he don't say somebody snitched. The Bible, the Bible said that, that, that you know somebody's in his chambers that is listening. And then he said, "Now, okay, who's snitching? Somebody is. Somebody got to be telling them what I'm saying." And then one one of his servants say, "No, look, they got this man named Elisha, and 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 he know the secret things you talk about in your bedroom." He said he even know what you're talking about in your room where ain't nobody yet. The king said, wait a minute, what? He said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Go show, go come, go find where he is. Because, because you got to understand, the king of Assyria, they, they was, hey, he was bad. He was bad, he was a bad man. And what he wanted, he conquered. But he couldn't figure out how every time he was trying to overcome and conquer God's people, they had one up on him. And here we go. And we find ourselves right here with, with Elisha. They find ourselves with Elisha. And, and they done already, this, this servant already told him, look, there's a man named Elisha. And everything you keep saying to us, some type of way, he keep finding out. And he keep finding out. And he keep telling them, so when we try to do what you tell us to do, they already know, so they're not there. Say, okay, wait a minute. Man, let's go to 13. That's just the background of what's going on. Okay? Now, let's dig. I want to show you something. 13. Start at 13. Now, this is what, this is what listen, this is what, this is what he's saying. Okay? Now, okay, I'm going to start at 12 because I just told you what uh, he just said. So, this is the service saying, Elisha the prophet that is in Israel... Tell it the king of Israel the words that you're speaking in your bed chain. Y'all see that? He said he's trying to figure out why is the king of Israel 
and the people of Israel knowing everything he's doing, but he don't know that God has a prophet named Elisha who God is telling everything to, right? Go to 13. And he said, go and spy where he is that I may see him and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he their horses and chariots and a great host. And they came that night and compassed the city about. And, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early, this is now Elisha's armor bearer getting up early. And going forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, At last, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that are with us are more than they are with them. Now look, let, now, now let me paraphrase that so you can get what's going on. He said, Elijah's armor bearer got up early, went out and looked out among the land, spying out, went out and looked, checked out the neighborhood, see what was going on. He saw they were surrounded. So they surrounded, came back and said, hey, Elijah, look here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because, because we surrounded, which means there's nowhere to go. We surround. We can't get out. So what are we going to do? Now look, at, listen to Elijah. He answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed. This is where, this where we're going. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain that was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha keep let me keep reading and when they came down to him Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said Lord smite the people I pray thee with blindness and he smoked them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, this is not the way. Neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. Now, here go Elijah. Talking to the people that's looking for him. Because they're coming to get the, ink, the king of Israel. But he said, go find the one that keep finding everything that I'm doing. So they're coming to look for Elisha. Now here they come, and here go Elisha, after asking God to open the, a young man's eyes so he can see, and God opened up the man's eyes, and he saw, and then Elisha asked God to blind them. Now this is why I want you to stay with me. I told you I'm going to walk you. Stay with me. Open his eyes to see. Blind them. The Bible said that God blind them. God blind them. God said God smite them and God uh, smote them with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. And Elijah said unto them, this is not the way. Neither is this the city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek but led, and led them to Samaria. So now let's dig. Let's dig. I'm dig real, real slow so you won't have a chance to get lost. Now, we're going to start with opening up the young man's eyes. But before I get there, let me go to where he done said, Lord, first blind them. Okay? Now, he's asking God to blind his enemies. Right? And God did it. But obviously, there's something else to it. Say, prove it. Because after God blinded them, he said, come follow me. After God blinded the men, 
Elijah said, now come follow me. So we know, is it safe to say they physically are not blind? Is it safe to say that? Because after God blinded them, he said, come follow me. It's hard for somebody blind to follow somebody that did not care taking them by the hand. Now let's dig. Come on, let's dig. Let's dig. Let's dig. Let's dig. Come on. Let's dig. Let's dig. Because, 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 because the, the, the spirit world. The spirit world is so real. Watch this. Take, take note of this. Take note of this. The spirit world is so real that it can't be visually seen. That, that went over your head, didn't it? Did that go over your head? Did that go over your head? The spirit world is so real that you can physically, visually see it. That's how real it is. It's so real, your physical eyes cannot even pertain it. That's how real it is. It's so real, it's invisible to physical. No, y'all get that one time. It's so real, it's invisible to physical. Let, let, let me help you out. Guess what else so real is invis invisible to physical? The air you breathe. It's so real, it's invisible to physical. But you got to keep breathing if you want to live. I'm trying to take you to where the spirit and the physical. That air is so real that you and I need it to exist. Yet physically we cannot see it. Now let's dig because though we can't see it, Tate, now, there are new technologies. There are things to prove what's here that we can't see. Can I so, go, go to 2 Corinthians? I'm, I'm going to prove it. I'm, I'm going to walk you slow on this because I can't afford to lose nobody. 2 Corinthians. Because I, I, I want you guys to understand how important the spiritual realm, the spiritual world, if you would, is. Air is so real, we can't see it. Yet we know it's here because we have to use it to live. Come with me to 2 Corinthians. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on in the room. Second Corinthians. I, I wanna because we need to we need to know so you can if, if you don't how can I put this? If you can't expect for God. To do something for you that you don't believe he had the resources to do it with. And the only reason we get dumbfounded or slightly mistrustworthy is because we can't see the resources. Because I don't know, I can't see where God gonna get it from. I, I can't see where He gonna get this that I'm looking for Him to do from. I can't see it. But if I had knowledge, if I had knowledge that whether I seen it or not, I know God had the resources stored up. It don't matter whether I see it or not. I know he got it. But 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 I have to know. 
See, I have to know that God has the resources. See, and that's what we that's what we that's what we trip ourselves up at because we so used to the physical. I'm so used to show me the resources that I can believe. Go to Second Corinthians. Come on, let's get Second Corinthians. I'm gonna walk slow. I'm gonna walk slow. I'm gonna walk slow, so I won't lose nobody. Second Corinthians. I want to show you this because I'm trying to connect how real the spirit is, the spirit realm is, more than this physical realm. I'm, I've got to connect that for you. And hopefully after the day, once I connect the dots for you, you will start seeing God in a different way. Because I recall, I recall, I heard, I heard Minister Jackson, I heard Minister David Jackson, I heard him say, I heard him. I heard him when he was, when he was uh, uh, teaching Bible class, and I heard him say, I heard him say, and God said that. And then God saw that. And that was. But yet it did not materialize until further down the scripture. Which means God saw that. God spoke that. Well, here we let's, let's, let's start over. God thought that. Then he spoke it. Then he saw it. Now watch this. It did not appear right away. But because of the resources God had, and he thought, saw, and spoke, what he thought, saw, and spoke automatically was going to be there because he had the resources to bring it into physical into the physical realm. Even though God was speaking spirit. Second Corinthians, watch this, watch this. Second Corinthians, I'm going to walk slow. Let me walk slow. Let me, get, let me not get too excited. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the fourth chapter, the fourth chapter, the fourth chapter. Because I want to show you, I'm trying to show you how the spiritual realm is so, look, 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 come on, watch this, watch this. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the 18th verse. The 18th verse, fourth chapter and 18th verse. Watch this, watch this. Just follow along with me. I'm gonna read it. Follow along with me. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, while we look not at the things which are seen, this is Paul talking, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's why, that's why minister said, as minister Jackson said, that's why God can call out a tree in eternity, but the tree comes into the physical because it's temple. So speaking it in spirit makes it eternal. But when he spoke it in eternity, it took time for it to leave eternity to come down to the physical realm. Did you get that? You got that? Watch this, watch this. Watch this. Look, okay, look, 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 look. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm, try I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to show you how. I'm trying to show you how you operate in the spirit every day unknowledgeably knowing. Watch this. I remember, I remember, because I'll never forget, I thought they were going to lock me up. Me and my wife went to California. I want to make my point. Me and my wife, we went to California. We got on a plane. You know, I don't want to get on it. Come on, come on, let's get on a plane. We got on a plane. We had to go, look, look, look. We had to go through the baggage claim, right? Thank you, Holy Spirit. We had to go through the baggage claim. And, 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 and my wife, I was afraid because baggage claim in baggage claim. It's a lot of baggage. And I wasn't trying to claim all of them. And what happened was we put our bags on this thing. And then they told me, they said, they said, okay, come here. Now get in this line. And we had to get in the line where we, we had to get in the line where we had to go through, where we had to go through the metal detector. 
And they said, okay, if you got anything metal, uh, my wife had some big cup full of something. They told her, man, okay, take it there, throw it away. You, 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 you drink it right right here or you got to throw it away? One or the two. They said, I said, okay. They said, take everything metal out your pocket. Anything you got on there, da, da, da. I said, okay, I took everything. I took my belt off. I take my shoes off, my socks off. But well, wait a minute. So we walked through. We walked through. We walked through. And they made me stand in this thing that went around. It's, it was like a little tube. And you had to stand there. And that thing, what that thing did, what that thing did was scan your body. Now, 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 I forgot I had a little knife in my pocket. It was, it was connected to my cat. I forgot about it. I forgot about it. But here's my point. Here's my point. Listen to me. Here's my point. Here's my point. I forgot I even had the knife. The people, it was on my key ring. The people can't see that I got a knife. But the technology that they had, the technology that they had allowed them to see beyond the physical. And what happened was the technology, the sensor went off because of the metal that I had in my pocket. And they said, okay, sir, come on. Hey, hey, what's in that pocket? I said, what's in my pocket? Nothing. I, oh, I pulled out my camera. Oh, he like, ah, yeah, come on, give me that. <laughs> uh, Pat, they had to tell me, come on, sir, you go over here. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm not trying to kill nobody. My whole point was to tell you that, to show you how, even though things may not be physically seen, as Paul just said, as Paul just said, they may not be physically seen. That does not mean that there's not anything operating in it that can't be seen. You can't see what that thing doing once you get in there and go around your body. You don't know what it's doing. But we do know that its function is operable. It functions is operable because it, it lets them know. Do, 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 do. He holding some. Do, do, do. She got some in her purse. Do, do, do. Some in his sock. It shows and point out. It shows and point out what's beyond your seeing. That little thing that goes around. That's in the airport. That's in the airport. That's in the airport. You there? Okay. Let me talk to some history buffs. World War II. We all know. Okay, let me go over here. World War II. No, 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 no. I'm because I because my father used to make us watch all these crazy world movies. In World War II, I remember, I recall, I recall, in World War II, Germany. They were trying to take over England. And what happened was Germany was already up on them or, or, or two steps ahead of everybody else with the radar. Yes. And England kept finding out, kept figuring, kept trying to wonder how they keep knowing where we finna be to drop these bombs. Yes. Because they had already figured out how to use radar. And what they did was because they was able to use the radar, they was able to prevent England from dropping bombs in Germany because they can see where they were going to be. The radar is invisible. Yet the radar can pick up your position. The spirit world is invisible. Yet God can pick up your position because whether you see it or not, there is something operating in the spirit world that's realer than the physical world. Come on, come on, walk with me slow, walk with me slow. Because, come on, let's come, come, come with me. Let, well, let's go to John, I want you to see something. I want to go to John. I want you to see some. I gotta show you. Go to John, go to John, go to John, because, go to John. Go to John, go to John, because, because I, I recall, I remember, I remember, I, you know me, I, I, I love nature. And I was watching this, I was watching this, this, um, 
this history animal planet thing one day. And what happened was uh, uh, these, these hyenas, these hyenas were, they were, they were, they were trying to, they were trying to get this, they were trying to get this, this pride of lions food. But, and you know, and the lions was, they was full. They had ate everything they want, but they wouldn't let it go. Because the hyenas, you know, they knew the hyenas wanted it. So they would just sit there and they was watching them. And what happened was, it ended up getting dark. And in Africa, dark is a different dark. It ended up getting dark. And what happened was, the cameraman switched his camera. He said, now, it's dark, and we can't really see what's going on. He said, but because I have heat sensors, he said, because my camera have heat sensors, though we can't see what's going on, the camera will show us their bodies. The camera will show us from our camera picking up their heat from their heat sensor will show us exactly what they do. And do you can do you can you believe that the camera, uh, the heat of the lion looks just like the lion? The heat of the picture looked just like the high heat. Yet it was dark, we could not see it. But because of the technology of the heat sensing cameras, they were able to still pick up the visual. Now let me tie that into what I'm trying to tell you. Let me tie that into what I'm trying to tell you. It makes no difference how dark the time in your life get. And you can't visually see what's around you and where you are. If you believe in the spirit realm, that the technology God have, his radar can pick you up wherever you are, and it shows him where you are, then you should be able to believe in the spirit realm. Come on, John, 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 John. I told him, walk slow, John. The 20th chapter, the 20th chapter. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Look, 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 look. I'm, I'm trying to drive home so much the point of how important, watch this, how important it is for us to know, listen to me, to know how much realer the spirit realm is than the physical. I'm, I'm, come on, come on, come on. I'm walking slow. John. John, the 20th chapter. Listen to what Jesus said. Now, you don't want to believe me. That listen to what Jesus said. John, the 20th chapter, the 29th verse. Watch this. 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 He said, 29th verse of John. You there? That 20th chapter. He says, and Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. But blessed are they who have not seen yet have believed. Blessed are they who have not seen yet believe. That's why I told you, we got to know to see the spirit realm you can't see. But you have to believe and know this, this is what the knowledge I'm talking about. You have to know that it's realer than what you even see. Come with me. Come with me. Come on. I'm, I'm going to make my point. Can I make my point? First Peter. Come on. I'm going to show. go to First Peter. I, I know y'all don't. I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you something. I want to show you something. You just allow me to walk a little slow. I'm, I'm Go to First Peter. First Peter. First Peter. That's right after James. First Peter. First Peter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something. I gotta show you something. First Peter. First Peter. 
First Peter, the fifth chapter. Watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Fifth chapter, the eighth verse. Watch this. Watch this. He says, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, I say your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You don't know say that? Okay, okay. Be sober, vigilant. Because your adversary, your enemy, your counterpart walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Let me flip the switch. Now, Kenneth, your adversary, your adversary, right? It's not physical. Huh? 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 He's not physical. This is why Paul said, hey, be sober and vigilant because he's not physical. And in other words, you can't see him with your physical eyes. Your vision, you can't see him. So make sure you're careful. Make sure, make, make sure that, that, that you're watchful because, watch this, watch this, because he's walking around looking who he can ambush. That's what he means by walking like a roaring lion. A lion is an ambush predator. A lion hides down in the grass and waits for the weak and the old to come past so he can pounce or ambush on his prey. He's, he's looking. He's looking to see who's believing more in their physical eyesight than their spiritual eyesight. And he's waiting to ambush those who see in the physical more than the spiritual. In other words, those who see the problem bigger than the problem solved. Those who see in the sickness bigger than he that can heal and make anything whole. Those who see in the rough and hard times seeing that bigger than God is. It's like, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's like this. It's like this. I used to have a dog named Princess. I trained her very well. I trained her so well. Watch this, watch this. Let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean about how he's trying to ambush those whom are not paying attention and who are looking at the physical. Look, I, I had a, a dog, a lot of you guys know it. Her name is Princess, very well trained. I made sure I trained her well. Let me tell you what I used to do. I used to wait till I got ready to feed her. And I'll get her food and I'll make it. And she'll sit there salivating, <laughs> drooling at the mouth, drooling at the mouth. I'm making a point. Drooling at the mouth. <laughs> and I'll hold the food up. I'll sit the food down and I'll walk away just to see because she already knows she can't touch it unless I say so. Amen. But I used to sit the food down and just sit there. And she just foul, man. She just. Drew, drooling at my now here's my point watch this Kenneth she's sitting there Tate wanting the food hungry for the food appetite for the food but her eyes never look at the food she look at me to say get it y'all don't get that look, look here her eyes Never look at the object. Never look at the object. Her eyes stayed glued to her master and waited for him to say, get it. He 
walking around trying to see who eyes are more on the object, who eyes are more to the physical, but who eyes are not looking at the master, even though she wanted the food. She knew it was her food. She wouldn't even look at the food. She was looking at me to say, get it. She was waiting to see for the master to say, it wasn't okay. And then what I did, and then what I did was, I started making my kids do it. You know, just to show her that she down in the totem pole. I used to make my son put it down. And of course, princess would look at me like, really? But she never looked at the food. She'll look at me, I'll look back at her, then she'll look at Julius, and Julius say, okay, get it. And she'll go get it. And that's just like you and me. It's the, it's the same thing. The master's number one. The son is behind the master. And if the son is behind the master, and I'm going to join out with the son, then I should be able to, to do the same thing the, son, the master's able to do. I should hold the same amount, the same amount of respect, the same amount of authority, the same amount as the master does. And my son, even though my son was five and four, she didn't see, even though she knew he was a child, she was looking at authority. And, and our enemy walking around trying to see who looking more in the physical realm than they are the spiritual realm. Who allowing the effects of the physical realm to prevent them from tapping into the spiritual realm. And that's what he walking around trying, come on, I'm going to prove it. Go, come on, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. Go to First Timothy. Go to First Timothy. Go to First Timothy. First Timothy. I'm a, I want to show you how important the spiritual realm is. It's, it's so important that we take it too lightly. Amen. We take it too lightly. And, and because we take it lightly, our adversary goes around. Listen, let me tell you something. Let, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something that God told me. Let me tell you something that God told me. Say what, God? He said, what is that? the enemy does not put thoughts in your mind or tell you what to think. I said, now, wait a God, I done had some thoughts and I knew they weren't mine. That would have been the devil now. Mm -mm. He said, no, no, son. What he does is influence your thoughts. See, he take your thought and he influence it, watch this, watch this, with physical appetite. It's never nothing spiritual. It's always physical appetite that he influence our thought process with. Say, prove it. He told Jesus, hey, Turn this stone to bread. Amen. Physical. Amen. He said, no, I ain't going to do that because man should not live by bread alone. But by every word that uh, comes out of the, mouth of, the Lord, uh, mouth of God. He said, okay, good. Then he took him up to the pinnacle. He said, okay, let me show you some more physical stuff. Come here. Come here, come here. If you throw yourself down, since, since you want to keep talking about spirit, the spirit said that he'll send his angels to, to uh, grab you up before you fall so you won't even dash your foot on the stone. Don't it say that? He said, yeah. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It also said, you, you don't tempt God. I'm not going to tempt God. I'm not going to tempt the spirit with the physical. I know how to differentiate the two. I know how to keep spirit and spirit and keep physical physical. Okay. Then he took him somewhere else to the physical. Look at all this physical stuff. Look at all this physical stuff. 
I give up. Look, you know how this is mad. Now, you Jesus, so you already know God gave me the power to, to, to influence all this. All this is mad. I'll give you all this. If you, watch this, if you, if you, look, let me tell you what his bow down was. If you put the physical before the spirit. See, Jesus never put the physical before the spirit. But the bowing down was, if you fall to the word, I'm trying to get your influence to think. If you bow down to where I'm trying to get you to see. Stop seeing what you're seeing and start seeing what I'm seeing. That's what your enemy try to do. Come on, first, first Timothy. Come on, first Timothy. I told you I'm going slow. I'm going slow. I'm trying to go slow. You there? You there? You there? First Timothy, the, I want to go to the third chapter. Yeah, third chapter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, right here, yeah, uh, 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 the third chapter in the seventh verse. L listen, listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's saying. He's talking about, he's, he's giving them uh, qualifications of deacons and all this. But I, this is the part I want to get you to see right here. Moreover, he they talk talking about the different qualifications for people that should be a deacon or, or people that should be able to uphold God's standards. Watch this. He said, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Do you know what the snare of the devil is? Huh? Can I tell you? The snare of the devil. The snare of the devil. What the devil is trying to bombard you with 24 hours a day. He's trying to get you and me to keep your eyes on it and not your eyes on God. See, that, that's, 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 that's what he comes to fight you with. That's what he coming to fight you with. Look, 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 look. Now, now, come on, let's go on back to Second King. I'm going to show you. Let's go back to Second King. Look, cause, because you got to understand. You got to understand. What he was trying to get the servant to do. Remember the servant? Remember the servant? Go back to Second King. Go back to Second King. I just had to lay my little foundation. Let's come on. Let me walk you across the street so you can get up out of here. Second King. We was in Second King, the sixth chapter, remember? You there? Second King. Back to six. Second King six. Remember? Come on, we're going. Chapter 6, we're back, to, we're back to the original story. Remember the man came, the, the servant came in, hey, Elijah, what are we going to do? Elijah told him. And the Bible said that Elijah told God, look, open his eyes that he may see. Are you there? Let me, let's, let's, let's read it again. Sixth chapter. Yeah, we started at 13, didn't we? I think, did we start at 13, didn't we? Or the 12? Okay. Let's, let's go back there. Uh, second King, back at Second King, the sixth chapter. Okay. Uh, did I start at 12? 12. And one of his servants said, none, my Lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel, the word that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, go and spy where it is that I may send him to fetch him. And it was told that he was in uh, Dothan. And therefore, come on down. Come on down to where we at. Come on down to where we at. Come on down where we at to the 16th chapter. And he answered. I mean, and when the 15th chapter, 15th chapter. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, he went forth. Behold, a host compassed. Uh, yeah, the sixth, the sixth chapter, the 14th verse I'm on now. Therefore, sent he thither the horses and chairs and a great host. And they came that night and compassed the city about. Them. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, he went forth. Behold, a host. Compassed around the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servants said unto him, At last, master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. This is back where we are. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, 
open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes at a young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. And when they, and when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord, and he said, smite the people. We're going to stop right there. Let's stay right here, right here. Elisha prayed to God and said, Lord, open his eyes. I pray you, open his eyes that he may see. Now, we know the young man was not blind because he had just came and said, hey, they're everywhere. So we know he was not blind. Say it again. We know he was not blind because he just came and said they're everywhere. Right? We know he was not blind because he just came to Elisha and said they're everywhere. And Elisha said, let me pray. God opened his eyes so he can see. Now listen. Listen. Take this to heart, what I'm going to tell you now. The servant, the young man. This is Elisha's servant. Is it not? Which means he is close enough to Elisha. He's close enough to Elisha to have experienced Elisha's experiences before. Is that true to say? Because if he's his servant, you know, today, they, that's, his, that's his homeboy. They, they, they kick it like that. Okay, where he go, he go. Okay, so so why then is the servant eyes closed? Come on, I, I, I can hear I can hear y'all thought. I can hear y'all. I can hear y'all thought because he ain't Elisha. He not the prophet. Elisha was the prophet of God, so that's why his eyes were open. Look. Look, do you remember, do you remember, you go to chapter before this, do you remember Elijah and Elisha was his armor bearer and, and Elijah told Elisha, ask me what you will and I'll give it to you because, because, because. Because you haven't failed in our relationship. Watch this. Because you haven't given up on what you believe me to be. I'm, I'm, bringing, it, I'm bringing it home. Because you stood in what you said you would. Because you believe what the word of God said. Because even in the midst of the fight, even in the midst of the struggle, even in the midst of the prophet of Baal prophets, even in the midst of all God had to do before you, and even though you God was still doing it for me, because you still stayed in relationship close enough. Close enough to see what God was doing. Ask me what you will. And Elisha said, well, look here. Since God done that for you, and I done stayed close to you, let me get a double portion. I want a double portion. Watch this, another word. Let me help you with the double portion so you can understand. I want to be able to believe double as much you believe. I want to be able to walk with God double the amount of time you walk with God. I want to be able to trust in God double the amount of you trusted in God. I want to be able to, to uh, decree what God said double as much as you did. And Elijah told him, what you asking ain't an easy thing. Look, look, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this, I'm gonna help you out. What you asking is not an easy thing because it ain't easy 
to trust God when you don't see him. It's not easy to still say for God I live and for God I die when you in the hospital. It's not easy. It's not easy to say I, if God be for me, he's more than the world against me when they say they coming to take your house. It's not easy. Say what you ask is a hard thing. But watch me break it. Watch me bring it home, son. He said, but but if you continue in the relationship that we had when I get ready to leave here, if you see me when God get ready to take me, if you stay connected to what you've been knowing works for you, if you stay compelled to do what God told you to do, he said, if you see me when I leave, you can, and, I, and you catch my, uh, my mantle, you can get it, right? And the Bible said, let me show you how Elijah could tell God to open the boy's eyes. And the Bible said that when God came to get Elijah, he came with horses of fire and a chariot. The Bible said Elijah left him on a chariot of horses with fire. Now we find ourselves with Elisha, with a servant who was in Elijah, Elisha's place. I know where you've been. I was where you are once. I had to follow somebody too. I had to keep saying I believe when I was a little wishy-washy too. I know where you are. God, open his eyes. Open his eyes. Watch this, Kenny. Watch this. So he can see. But, but what did he see? What did he see? He saw fire, horses of fire, and chariots. So what, watch this, Kenny. Watch this. Watch this. So what he saw, what he saw, Dennis, was what Elisha saw. Oh, God, Elisha was telling God, show him what you showed me. Show him what you showed me. Because when you showed it to me, I believe that what you had was greater than anything, that anything else that I saw out of these eyes. Show him what you showed me. So he can see, watch this, watch this, that it's more of us Than it is them. Now, now watch this, Kenny. Watch this. Now they was coming to get them with horses and chariots, were they not? They that's, that's what he seen. The Bible said he seen them surrounded by horses and chariots. But when Elisha said, "Open his eyes, let him see," the Bible said that his eyes were open, and he saw, and he saw. The spirit realm way more, uh, way more bigger, grander, paramount than the physical realm. Because Elisha asked God, allow him to see that it's more with us than it is with them. And when you start to see the spirit, greater than the physical, then you will start to realize and understand that it really makes sense now when you say that if God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, he's more than the world against me because, 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 because the physical realm showed them outnumbered. Right? They were surrounded. They was outnumbered in the physical realm. They was outnumbered. But the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm that, 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 that is not allotted to all physical eyes showed, watch this, watch this, this is what it showed. Dennis. See, it showed 
that if I'm here and I got an angel, that's two. And she here, and she got an angel, that's four. And, and, and he here, and they here, and they here, and we all got angels, so that's double the amount that's really in here. And they, the enemy, don't have no angels. So he is more than the world against me. He is more because it's more than just me. God come with backup. In other words, let me just make it plain. God comes with backup. Even though he don't need backup, he brings backup for our behalf just so that we can know, that we can see that the spirit will always outbeat the physical. Now look, 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 I'm done, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, look, 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 he said, he said, listen to what he said, listen to what he said, listen to what he said. It was, see what, what, what Elisha was trying to get the young servant to see was, because if you know the Bible didn't say that the angels of horses and chariots and fire was around them. It said it was around Elijah. It was around Elisha. See, see, the spirit realm is around those who are in relationship with it. I know. I see. See, see anybody want to clap for that? See anybody want to clap for that? See, I want to clap with that. The spirit realm was around Elisha because Elisha was in relationship with God. He was in relationship to the spirit realm. You can't try to get the benefits of the spiritual realm if there's no relationship that connects you to it. He said, can I prove it? Can I prove it? Watch this. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me prove it. Right after that, look. After he tell him to open up his eyes, you know, the words, show him the spirit realm, Jesus. Show him, Lord. Let him, allow him, because see, let me tell you what the spirit realm do. Somebody need to write this down. Write this down. If you don't get nothing else, write this down. Let me tell you what the spirit do. The spirit realm, when you're looking in the spirit and you're seeing, and you're seeing visually in the spirit, what the spirit does, the spirit realm does, is it helps you see past the problem. The spirit realm. See, that's why you have to be in relationship with it. Because the spirit realm helps you see past the problem. The physical realm causes you to be stuck seeing the problem. But in the spirit realm, it causes and allows us to see past the problem. What, what, read right here, right here, right here, right here. He told him. He told him. He told him. Yeah. Yeah. I want a double portion. See, we all say, look, don't you know how we all play? I want Elisha's double portion. I want a double portion like Elisha had. But, 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 but Elisha had to pay for that double portion. Oh, that didn't, oh, that didn't come with just a fair, a fair wash by day life. No, Elisha, Elisha had to fight day and night. Elisha had to be God's voice day and night. When, when the people, was, when other armies was attacking Israel, when other armies was taking over different villages, Elisha had to be God's voice. That double portion cost. That cost with a relationship. Meaning that when I lose somebody, 
I can't let that affect my relationship. That double portion cough. When I get upset or my body get wrecked in pain, I can't allow that. I can't allow that to interrupt my relationship because it's my relationship to God through the spirit world that drives me. It's my relationship with God to the spirit realm that makes me thrive in what I believe. It's my relationship. He, Elijah told Elisha, yeah, you want a double portion? That's a hard thing. But, but if you show yourself worthy of keeping a relationship, watch this, Kenneth, watch this. Even though it's thin the end, But you show yourself faithful yeah. and true. Yeah. Watch this. Not to me. <laughs> Not to me. But to who I've been showing you who to stay in relationship with. It's not to me. It's to God. And look, let me show you. Let me show you how I know what I'm talking about. The Bible said that. After God opened up the young man as he seen, there was more of them than it was at the enemy. The Bible said, then they came. And Elisha prayed again and said, Lord, smite these people. I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Lord, smite these people with blindness and, and, and with blindness. And the Bible said that, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. According to what Elisha asked, the spirit realm delivered. See, the spirit realm can't deliver to know where he don't know the postcode. He don't deliver where he don't know the zip code. He don't deliver where he don't know the address. He said, he said, Lord, smite them with blindness. Now I'm done. This is what I want you to get. This is what I want you to get. Smite them with blindness. Now we know that obviously they couldn't be physically blind because it was a horde of them. It was an army. And he, I say, according to Elisha's word, God smote them with blindness. And I had to ask God, I said, well, God, what kind of blindness was that? He said, that blindness, it was, see, it wasn't physical. It wasn't a physical blind eyes that God blinded. But what God did was God used the spirit realm, watch this, to blind their knowledge. Amen. Amen. Say prove. They went knowing they was looking for Elisha. They went knowing they was coming to apprehend Elisha. But when Elijah said, blind they knowledge, not that they don't know what they coming to look for, just don't let them see I'm who they looking for. And God blind their knowledge. And the person they're looking for led them all the way to another country, to Samaria. That's because, that's because, that's because your seeing, your spiritual vision is what you know. See, that's why a lot of us can't stay connected to the spirit realm 
because we don't know enough about the spirit. I know everything about the physical. Two plus two equals four. Five plus five equals ten. But what we don't know is God said, for everyone there's a thousand that's with me. I know two plus two equals four. But I don't know one thousand shall fall by their right hand. Ten thousand. I don't know that math. I don't know that math. But I know two plus two equals four. He said, 1,000 shall fall by that left. 10,000 shall fall by the right hand. What about that man? See, that's spiritual man. Meaning that I'm not by myself. Meaning that God is with me. And it is more of us than it is of them. He said, I was a child. I spake as a child. I, I spake as a child. I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became grown, when I became of age enough when I became responsible enough I put away childish things see see you have to put away the notion of seeing the physical realm greater than the spirit realm you have to get into the get into the knowledge and start to feed yourself so you can graduate in the spirit realm in the mathematics of the spirit realm see it i'm done he said i'm recall i remember you know i remember something i remember a long time ago a long time ago, I used to, you know, I, I was a, I was a very avid reader, and I used to like I used to like Billy Graham. He was a, he was amazing to me, yeah. how he used to go yeah. from country to country, oh, yeah. and how he used to how he used to how he used to convert so many. Yeah. I remember watching one of his yeah. one of his uh, uh, one of his conferences, and how and how he had talked about Jesus yeah. so much that all these thousands of people. Ran up there yeah. to get saved. And I remember yeah. that. And I remember one time, I'll never forget this. Thank the Holy Spirit for bringing this back to my remembrance. I remember one time, because Billy Graham used to go everywhere. everywhere. I'm talking, he used to go to Europe. Yeah. He used to go to Africa. Yeah. I'd be like, they steady letting this white man. I'd be like, yeah. Jamaica. I, he was everywhere. And what I loved about Billy Graham was Billy Graham relationship with God showed everywhere he went. Everywhere he went. His relationship with God showed. And I'm recall, I'm recall, I'm done. I just want to, I remember the story. I recall, I recall reading his book one day. I was reading his book. I was reading it. And I read his book. And he was talking about how he was in this um, this island. He was at this island. I'm trying to think, what was it? Uh, it's one of them countries. One of them countries, but it was an island. I remember he was in the island. He was on the island. And him and his wife was there. And, 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 and what happened was, he said that uh, he was getting ready for his conference. You know, he was in there doing, getting ready to Go and talk to the people and all this. And the, the king of the island had grabbed the arm, had told all the army, okay, here come this Christian man. We're not going to let him uh, turn out, turn out our, our, our island. And he told him, and he said, he said, they could hear 
they could hear the army getting ready, stumping. Da, da, da. He, he said, and he said, we could hear it was hundreds of them getting ready to come and storm where him and his wife were staying to come do them harm because they, you know, to them, talking about Jesus is, is, is blasphemy. Don't bring that to our eyes. And he said, and he said, him and his wife got on their knees. He said, and they started praying. And he said they stopped praying. And they stopped praying. He said, that night, he said, that night, that night nothing happened. He said, but a week later, he said, but a week later, the king of that island who sent the army sent for Billy Graham and told him to come on. And I want to hear what you have to say. And Billy Graham said, and he said, he said, Okay, I understand. I, I, I can do what I came here to do. Thank you so much. He said, but I got to ask you something. He said, I remember last week, and I heard the army coming. He said, they had already sent somebody to my room to tell me that y'all was coming to try to kill us. And he said, and I heard the army preparing. He said, I just, I got, I have to know what happened. <laughs> and Billy Graham said, the king told him, oh, we was coming. And we've come to get you and that little white lady with you. He said, but there were some tall men outside where y'all were standing. And they was very tall. And there was so many of them that I didn't want to lose all my army trying to come get you. And wasn't nobody there but Billy Graham and his wife. But my point in telling you that was his relationship to the spirit realm. See, 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 when God want to show up, he'll cause your enemy to see the spirit that you can't see. He said, and they say, he said, he said, he said, he said, from that moment, I knew. He said, I knew. He said, I always believed in angels. He said, but from that moment, I knew that God was a warring God. Warring. He said, oh, we, he's like, oh, we was coming to get you. But when we got there and we seen all them tall men, he said, they was tall men. And he said, and they all had, and this, this, this the part, like he said, and they all had swords with fire. He said, we, I want for to lose that many of my men. My point is, my point is, when you are in relationship with who controls the spirit realm, God will show up and do things you don't need to see. Only because of the relationship that you possess with the spirit realm. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. Let me paraphrase. In spirit and relationship of knowledge. See, that's the truth. The truth is his word don't go nowhere. The truth is what God said will be. But you have to have relationship of knowledge to know that. Everybody just don't know that. That takes a relationship. That takes knowledge of knowing and dwelling in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Elisha. Elisha wanted a double portion. He wanted a double portion. 
And when he got that double push, that double push came, came with responsibility. See, Elisha had to remember what he saw. When times got rough, do you remember what you saw before? Do you remember when God stepped in the last time? Or is what your physical eyes showing you? You stuck with the problem. we like to thank all you guys for tuning in. All you all that joined us today for our Bible class. If you didn't understand anything else today, please remember, remember that the spirit realm is contingent on your relationship with God. Please, please find yourself in deep relationship with God. God wants you to see the spirit realm. God wants you to operate in the spirit realm. God wants you to decree in the spirit realm. Because God is a spirit. We thank you for tuning in. God bless you. We will be here Sunday morning from 1030 to 1115 for Sunday school from 1145 to the spirit says we're done. This is the first Sunday of July. And we will also be going to um, to uh, OFC, Pastor Deshaun Key's church. We will be going there this Sunday as well. We will be going there to celebrate him with the seventh year anniversary. We will be going there to celebrate. Please come out, come and be a part of it. Come and join us there. Uh, you will see the address somewhere online. If you can, it's be on our page. Please come with us and share in those endeavors. God bless you guys. We love you. We will see you Sunday. Come on, let us all stand.